Sponsored by NatureBox. For great tasting, healthy snacks, and 50% off your first order, go to naturebox.com slash roosterteeth. Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins, and that rumor from the beginning of the week about Borderlands 2 getting a prequel has been confirmed in short order by Gearbox. For the full rundown on the early report, click here. Borderlands, the pre-sequel, has been quietly in development at 2K Australia since they wrapped work on Bioshock Infinite, and the resulting product so far has some heavy Aussie touches like a boss called Red Belly, based on famous Australian bush ranger Ned Kelly, and scabs that chatter at you in Aussie accents. 2K Australia producer Joel Eschler even hints there might even be a cricket reference in there. The four playable characters, Athena the Gladiator, Wilhelm the Enforcer, Claptrap the Fragtrap, and Tanisha the Lawbringer have all been confirmed. Those who played the first Borderlands will recognize Athena from her appearance in the General Knox DLC, and Wilhelm the Enforcer will upgrade over time to more closely resemble the half-man, half-loader boss he became at the beginning of Borderlands 2. As far as Claptrap and Nisha go, Gearbox isn't ready to share their secrets just yet, so count on hearing more about those as the game gets closer to launch. Gearbox chief Randy Pitchford also hints that DLC could add more playable characters. He says, There's four characters we're doing. We imagined more than that. It'd be awesome to build more characters, too. This pre-sequel will follow Handsome Jack's development into the villain of Borderlands 2, and Gearbox writer Anthony Birch explains, Handsome Jack starts off as a relatively sympathetic-ish sort of guy, because in Borderlands 2 his whole gimmick is, I want to be the hero, I want to destroy the bandits, and he just happens to think the good guys are bandits, and that's why he was the antagonist of the game. This time around, you see how he started as a person who basically just wanted to be a good guy and do the right thing. And as the rumor suggested, a significant part of the game will take place on Pandora's Moon of Elpis and in the H-shaped Hyperion base up there. But Pitchford promises it won't be a case of exploring one generic crater after another. In the same way that when you're on Pandora, there's a lot of diverse environments, there's some diversity up there as well, he says. And because it is on the moon, there will be implications with low gravity and oxygen. Oxygen reserves are a lootable commodity, which can be a pain to collect, but the ability to vent them and get double jumps and perform otherwise impossible platforming acrobatics makes up for it. The laser and cryo weapon type additions have also been confirmed. Cryo will freeze enemies into solid smashable blocks, and the lasers will vary from blasters to deadly beams for very Star Wars effect. The game is due out sometime this fall and will only be available on Xbox 360, PS3, and PC. Pitchford says, If you imagine where Borderlands Demand lives, it's on the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Windows PC. We don't know to what extent it will live on the next gen. But he goes on to speculate that perhaps by their third or fourth Christmas, the new consoles will have enough of an install base to support a Borderlands title. We'll keep you posted with more information when it's announced. For all the biggest updates on games and entertainment, click like and subscribe, and we'll keep you in the know.